Welcome back to Saltfish TV. And if this is your first time on the channel, first video, thank you for clicking on this and tuning in. Today's gonna be a little update video on all, all, all of these systems. Let's go. All right, so starting off with our BioCube 32 gallon. Now, this one was going through some ugly stages and then it went through a really big bacteria bloom, and then it went through like a, a phytoplankton bloom slash algae bloom. So we finally got it to where it is actually nice and clear. And I will be updating you on that in the process of how I got rid of the bacteria bloom and also how it went for about two months with me as the sole cleanup crew before I actually went and bought some snails and everything like that. So, so far this aquarium has actually been doing pretty well despite those uh, slight issues and everything. The coral are really starting to open up. And so this aquarium has actually been doing pretty well, pretty much on cruise control besides me doing uh, weekly water changes on there to try and clean it up a bit. And the soft coral, just look at this leather. It's doing really, really well. It's super big too. Uh, the scully even, it's doing super good. It's nice and puffy down there. The mushrooms doing good. The zoas are doing a lot better since the water's not so cloudy anymore from that bacteria bloom. Um, filtration. I'm going to save that for another video. So if you're here for this tank, stay tuned. All right, guys, now next up is the Fluval Evo 13.5 that I set up actually one month ago. And the rock has been cycled that we cycled in the previous video in a tub uh, for about five months. So this rock should be good to go. Uh, just running some of the Aquaforest uh, Biomedia in there. I put some of the Aquaforest Life Source mud in there as well to help get some diversity in bacteria and whatnot, sand from you know, the pet store, uh, running it basically stock, added a JBO SLW 10 in there for a wave maker. Uh, add a little bit more flow from these stock nozzles and everything. Uh, running a heater and nothing too fancy. Got it on an ink Inkbird heater controller. Eventually I got this RO reservoir for the cube, but it, the cube honestly doesn't evaporate that much because it still has a lid on it. And this one likes to evaporate a lot. So I think that I'm just gonna move that over onto this aquarium, clean this area up a bit, put it here, and then get the ATO hooked up onto this aquarium. It'll be good to go. Plans for this one coral wise, I'm just gonna take some coral out of the cage, especially the ones in the back. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, that way you can actually see the coral on display. It's not just hiding in the back of an aquarium. All right, next down the line is our macro algae bowl. Uh, it's doing really well. It's really easy. All that's in there is a heater and a little $5 pump that I got off of Amazon. I uh, recently added some new inhabitants, if you haven't seen them already. They are mollies, and they have been born in full salt water 1.026. I got them from a local. A uh, local buddy of mine and he just scooped up a whole bunch and gave them to me and I thought they would be perfect for the bowl until they mature enough and I think I'm gonna put a couple into the Evo maybe some in the cube as well and maybe convert convert one or two of them back to fresh water for the uh, freshwater tanks over there let's see where Ted go Ted oh Ted oh Ted was out here but uh he must have got too grumpy and left, but uh, the soft coral Kenya tree is doing really good in there. I've got the Calurbra. This one grows like crazy, so I have to trim it a lot. And recently I trimmed it in uh, very unintentional. I made a nice little path in here. I think it looks pretty cool. Overall, this thing is on cruise control as well. I barely even do water changes on it. Maybe maybe once a month or when I feel, feel like it. Yeah, just feed it. Nitrate, phosphate, food, feed the fish. 
and uh, it, just, it just goes on its own. I also have a video of me setting this up, but I will go more in depth on this in a separate video. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. And moving on. Next up, we have the K, the K900 Pro Reef Series 2. Uh, this thing is doing really well. Uh, it's currently going under a treatment of four times a dose using reflux to get rid of bubble algae. Um, I'm currently working on a video for that uh, specific issue and how that's going because it's taken about three weeks to a month to record for the progress. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that because that's actually doing pretty good. I can't wait to show you the results on that. It's actually cleaned up my sand bed as well and the rocks too. There was some Baryopsis going on in the sand bed. So it looks looks really nice and clean. Uh, the SPS are doing really well. I mean, there's a some, there's some that aren't doing so hot, but I mean, that happens. Uh, recently had a swing of calcium. Actually got a lot lower than I wanted to which in turn made the alkalinity rise. So that was my first indicator. Uh, first alarming indicator was from the GHL KHD doing test uh, four times a day, roughly. Uh, I kept watching it just go up without me adding anything to it. So I tested calcium and sure enough, it was 275 on the HANA checker and alkalinity was up at like 8.4 which didn't seem right to me without me adding supplements for like two, three days, especially in the tank like this, where you got sticks that are constantly eating alkalinity. So I'm currently dosing calcium to get that back up, which I'm watching the alkalinity go back down. So it's working and yeah, that problem is getting solved. To help me control alkalinity, uh, pH and calcium and all that and keep it elevated, the pH I'm talking about is for more growth. I'm actually going to start doing a uh, calc wasser, AKA pickling lime. It's Miss Wages pickling lime. That's what I'm going to use. I'm actually going to use it as a slurry, a calc slurry. Uh, that's what everyone's been talking about lately in the industry and in the hobby is calc wasser and calc slurry and stuff like that. So I'm going to make this in a bucket and then have it on a doser. I'm going to keep it spinning inside the bucket so it's a calc slurry so it's super concentrated and we're going to have it uh, being dosed by this last uh, dosing head from the kh director uh, about every 30 minutes to get a good uh, idea good ph level uh, before i actually get it controlled by the p4 ph probe in the sump now another issue going on in this cade is we're having issues with Aptasia everywhere. These anemones were, they were doing okay. They weren't spreading that bad, uh, but now they're actually really spreading, especially after using the, uh, the F Aptasia product. Only coated this one, only attacked this one. And it looked like it was working. And then next thing it was back and it has like two heads on it. And lots of babies are popping up everywhere. Aptasia is everywhere. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, try and get some peppermint shrimp or a fish that'll eat it. But I mean, that's so risky, especially with all these SPS. I don't want the, the fish or the shrimps to go after the SPS. But uh, sometimes, sometimes you gotta, you just gotta risk it for the biscuit to try and get rid of them because they're trying to overrun my scape. Now they're popping up in like other random places. You know. But it is what it is, it's part of reefing. We get it, we'll get it under control. We got the sticks growing, we got the gonies growing, we got the fish happy, feeding twice a day. That's about it for this system. It's doing it's doing pretty good. For the GHL mitres on there as well. Doing really good. And uh hey, bonus content. If you're in freshwater tanks, planted tanks, I just set these up you know, like a few months ago. Uh this bowl is really cool because there's no filtration, there's no heater, there's no flow, there's nothing. It's just plants, bacteria, and me doing water changes uh, like every few days or so and dosing some nutrients and fertilizer and things like that. And then this is the Elos cube. Uh had some issues with this one at first because all the plants that I bought, they just all melted and died. I thought we we're gonna come back. Left them in there, made nutrients go nuts, and then diatoms 
were everywhere. This whole thing was brown. Finally got that under control and then hair algae took over, did like three weeks blackout and then added more plants and stuff. And we'll see, there's still some, still some hair algae on things, but I think it's getting to where it needs to get and it's coming around. Oh guys, I didn't even realize the time. It's time to feed the fish. No, not this stuff. What we want is this good stuff. That homemade fish food, that's what we want. So if you guys haven't seen the recipe or the video, check it out, it's on my channel. How to make your own fish food. Okay, so this is my mixture that I feed the fish uh, twice a day. So there's one cube of the frozen food that I made. I'll do one or two squirts of the pack pods, oyster feast, do about half, lot, half, what is it, half ounce? Yeah, about a half ounce of this Fido. I'll do the row, Arctic pods, mysis feast, variety feast, and also uh, Brightwell Aquatics Vitamin M, which is a multivitamin for fish and the tank. This is very good for them and they love it. Alright guys, well these dirty socks are calling my name just like the back of your dirt road SUV that says wash me. Time to do some laundry. Till next time guys, just brief. Alright guys, well these dirty filter socks are calling my name just like the ones under your bed. All right guys, well these dirty filter socks are calling my name and they need to be washed just like the ones under your bed. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a little, 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 little. Today is gonna to be a little update video on. Record me. All. All. All of these systems. Let's go.